Hi, good afternoon. Um, we, my name is Denny Staples. These are my colleagues, Andy, Ashley, and Amanda. And today we would like to share with you the narrative of our research experience in Guatemala. Um, we consider a narrative and want to convey it to you as such for three reasons. The first is that this, was, this is an ongoing project that did not finish um, or conclude in summer of 2011, but rather is a constantly evolving narrative that we think um, is continuing today and will continue to evolve in the future and we therefore want to convey it as a narrative. Also, it is a story of real human lives and current realities in Guatemala. Um, and as such, because there are real humans and events involved in this research, we want to um, share their story with you and bring it to life with you as a story. Finally, um, this is, it's also, a, we consider a narrative for one more reason. It's a story of an exchange between our um, Guatemalan partners and ourselves, wherein they helped us become better researchers and public health practitioners while we helped them find their voice to craft and be architects of their own community. Um, this story takes place on Lake Atitlan, the deepest lake in Central America. Our research was in San Lucas Toliman um, in three rural communities um, located in close proximity to it. Um, we, the story is about water, and we actually, um, oh gosh, sorry, <laughs> losing it. Um, and so, it's, so it takes place on Lake Atitlan, where we conducted our research. Um, the central narrative of our story is about water. It's about how you use water every day. Um, the, the World Health Organization reports that one-tenth of the global disease burden is related to a lack of access to safe water and poor water management. At the same time, Guatemalan the Guatemalan government reports that the population without access to water resources is growing every year. And in rural communities in particular, half of the homes do not have access to water um, resources. Um, we conducted surveys, interviews, and conducted water tests. This is um, a question for my interview, and we think it's representative of our research and that it asks about beliefs and practices related to water in these communities. We found two themes that relate to, we think, all global development projects. The first is community involvement and engagement and how important that is to producing sustainable uh, projects in the future. Likewise, we found that an appreciation and understanding of the complexity of these communities is important um, and caring for and developing projects that are sustainable for many years to come. Okay, so as Denny mentioned, we really saw our research as a narrative. So right now, we'd really like to delve into the story of our research. And we feel that this is best illustrated when one of our team members said, we need to learn everything there is to know about, San Lu about water in San Lucas. And so for us, this meant, yes, we were looking at water quality, access, and resources. But we wanted to know people's perceptions of water, how they use it on a day-to-day -day basis, so we could really understand what these underlying needs are in the community. It's what we like to call stratified levels of assessment, where we're talking to the community itself, and that's kind of our source of experience, how they're interacting with water. But we also talk to community leaders, which was our source of knowledge, kind of that top-down approach, um, and more of the historic view of what water, of how water is in these communities. We'd also like to point out the interdisciplinary approach of our team. Um, as you can see, we had multiple different majors and schools in this project, and that really allowed us to be comprehensive. Um, as an engineer, you know, I was really focused on that quantitative analysis, and it really took both a qualitative and quantitative approach to come up with a comprehensive assessment. This is kind of the part of the story where it changed. You know, we came in with, this is our approach, this is what we're going to do, and we really realized that this is a community assessment. This community partnership is really critical. Uh, and here we were working with community leaders, um, and it really allowed us to be not only sustainable, but successful with our project. So to get into kind of the nitty gritty of our story, this was our quantitative approach. Um, and what we did was water testing for the presence of coliform bacteria. And as Jenny mentioned um, in the project that you just saw, Water contamination can lead to many different things within children, um, as well as the population in general, that can really affect development um, for these populations. We also tested for chlorination in water. Uh, as we were told, many of these communities use chlorine as a way to decontaminate their water. So we wanted to make sure, you know, is chlorine present? How much is there? And we tested this against agua pura, which is pure water. And that was kind of our control in these tests. We also focused on a qualitative analysis which was door-to-door -door surveys, going into these communities and asking a standard set of questions. We also had formal interviews, which were with churches, community leaders, um, and other previous projects that were in the area. And then finally, we had observations of the land. You know, where they're getting their water from, where the tanks are located, how hard is it to get into these communities, um, and that kind of 
qualified our qualitative analysis. Okay, so now we're gonna take you through the communities that we interacted with. We'd like to point out the uniqueness of our project that was pointed out by our community partner, who is a community doctor, in that this project is unique in that we sought to learn everything we could about the resources that, that were there, rather than bringing a project down to be completed in a certain amount of time. So, meet the new kid in town. San Gregorio is a recently constructed community with um, just under 30 families living there. The community gets its water from a tank that's fed from a spring nearby. The community's main concerns were that because they were a growing community, they were afraid they might reach a capacity in their infrastructure for water to family homes. They also expressed concern that the pipes that feed to their homes are very close to the surface of the ground and therefore could get damaged and pollute their water. Now, as we head over the river, we'd like to introduce you to Nueva Providencia. This community is larger with just under 50 families. This community is also fed by tanks. The lower section has a tank that feeds water regularly year round to the homes. The upper section doesn't have a tank that feeds to their homes. Instead, they get water from a rainy season spring and they've constructed ad hoc pipes just above the ground. This community was the only community that asked us to return before leaving the country to talk to their community leaders about the results that we had found. The community leaders expressed interest in a water health education program for their community and they sought to complete this through cooperation with an existing local health promoter in their community. Finally, the long and winding road to our largest community, San Martin. San Martin has over 100 families living there and also gets its water from a tank. The water to the tank is piped up from Lake Atitlan. This community's main concerns were that they felt their water was very dirty because it came directly from the lake. Many of our communities expressed that the lake was the dirtiest source of water available. The community sought interest in finding an alternative source to water, and in response to an interview question that asked how they would seek to improve the quality of their water, mentioned that they would like filters in their homes. Our team left Lake Atitlan with an abundance of knowledge. So much knowledge that we soon realized that with our resources, there was no way we could address all of the problems that we encountered. But of course, we made a promise to San Lucas to come back and do what we could to help improve their water situation. So after a thorough evaluation of all of our data, after all we had seen and all we had heard, we have decided to start with a project in San Martin. This is largely based on expressed community need and therefore predictably high levels of community cooperation as well as the existing infrastructure. As Mandy said, San Martin is the largest community. It also has a central paved road, and it's the only of the three to receive its water directly from Lake Atitlan as opposed to Nacimiento. And so this coming summer, Amanda and I have been given the Davis Projects for Peace grant to return and to initiate a water health education course. Um, this will be working with the local community health promoters, and it will culminate in the distribution of personal biosand filters. And this is exactly what many of the community members asked for from us. Um, we would like to recognize that this is a continuation project not only because we are directly using the knowledge from last year, but we are working very closely with our community partners, uh, most importantly Santiago, Vincente, and Dr. Toon. So while we're very excited to be able to go back, we also want to recognize that there are lots of other things we could be doing and there's still a lot of need within this community. Um, we also would like rec to recognize some of the limitations of our project. The first would be that although we really tried to make this as comprehensive as possible, there's no way that we could find out everything there is to know. There's inevitably going to be gaps in knowledge, whether we're there for weeks or for years. Um, we also want to say that our tests were done in the field, not in a laboratory. Um, and finally, most importantly, throughout the course of these surveys and interviews, we really found that for a lot of these families, water is not on the top of their list of concerns. And a window is really open to us to how difficult everyday life can be for an indigenous Guatemalan. We have here a quote from the Popol Vuh, which is a book of the people. It's a religious text of the indigenous Maya. Um, and it's, it's about their creation myth, which says, before the creation, there was nothing. The surface of the earth was hidden. There was only the sea and it was calm. And in the sky, there was nothing which could make noise. There was not a thing that existed, nothing that had being, only the sea and the still water. And we wanted to share this with you because we think it captures how s the central importance of water um, in these communities and to the Guatemalan people and their culture and also human life in general. As we were often told in our interviews, agua, des, agua es vida, or water is life. And so um, 
that we hope to see projects like these continue in the future so that water can bring life and not disease for these people. Um, as we have said, all of the water sources that we tested were contaminated with coliform bacteria. None of them had adequate amounts of chlorine to, purely, to sufficiently purify the water. Um, and so we hope that future projects will continue in the future. And for us, this is not the end of our narrative, but really the beginning of a collaborative partnership between U.S. and Guatemalan students and researchers that we hope will continue for many years. Thanks.